What's up guys, Curtis here, welcome to a brand new FIFA 19 video. Today, I've seen some of the hype floating around that there could be FIFA 19 upgrades coming this winter very, very soon, sooner rather than later. I think there's a lot of talk that they're going to be doing it a little bit earlier in the cycle this year. So, I thought I'd kind of keep up traditions, which is what I have done the last few years, and make a kind of FIFA 19 Premier League predicted upgrades. Now, I've put together just a starting 11 of some potential upgrades. There obviously can be many, many more than what I have mentioned in this video. So what I'd like to do is if you guys have any players that you think should be upgraded, pop them in the comments down below and tell me why they should be upgraded. If there's enough there that I agree with, maybe we'll make another video and we'll, we'll revisit some of your suggested ones as well. There are more players that I think probably could deserve it as well, but uh, this is just like an 11. There's normally like 30, 40 from the Prem. So there's a lot more that will get done. This is just 11 that really stood out to me uh, to, to kick this team off. And of course, if you disagree with any of the players mentioned in this video as well, then please do let me know in the comments down below. I'm always eager to hear what you guys think instead of uh, instead of what I've been going for. So, before I get into this one, there's something really quick I need to tell you about. This is the over 18s of you out there, and that is Slotterzilla.com. It's the best place to find any slots, online casino, stuff like that, and it keeps it all in one place. So it's easy for you to search and find whichever one you, you want. It gives you bonuses, sign-up promotions, all this good stuff, and keeps it in one big place for you. There's also monthly prizes monthly competitions, monthly giveaways, and there's a bunch of reviews in there so you know which ones are the ones to go for and which ones maybe uh, aren't quite as good as some of the other ones or which ones just suit you more. So that, of course, is Slotterzilla.com. There will be a link down below to that. Just a reminder, you have to be 18 or over to um, visit the website or use any of the stuff on the website. Back to the video. Without any further ado, we're going to kick it off with the first goalkeeper, and that is Neil Etheridge. Now I say first goalkeeper, it's the only goalkeeper. Neil Etheridge, of course, hasn't really kicked on at Cardiff. I listened to a podcast with him not so long ago and it was actually really, really interesting to kind of hear about his background. Obviously he plays in the Philippines, plays for the Philippines and like he was going off and playing national team games with them in front of 80, 90,000 people when he couldn't even get into a League One side. Really, really interesting. But obviously this season, He's done really well for Cardiff. They are, in my opinion, one of the worst sides in Premier League history in terms of like personnel, and they are smashing it for, for what they should be doing. Obviously, they're not flying up the table, but I, I thought they'd be rock bottom. I thought they'd be lower than Cardiff. I, I thought they'd be in for one of the worst Premier League points tallies ever. He's saved some pens. He's kept some clean sheets. He's been pretty, pretty important for Cardiff City kicking off. Um, kicking off their, the first half of their season so far. Now, how long that will continue, I don't know. But uh, he's been good. I think he deserves it. Next up, we have Matt Doherty. Now, Matt Doherty has been part of a really, really exciting Wolves side. That have uh, out of the, the three to come up, they've defo been the best. Obviously, Fulham spent quite a bit of money, and people thought they might do something, but they've they've not. Cardiff obviously have not. Wolves have been a side to really challenge the bigger teams. Didn't do so well against City in the most recent game, but they have put some teams under the pre under some pressure. And uh, four uh, four assists. Three goals in 22 appearances, pretty decent. Two man of the matches. The guys getting involved from right wing back, um, a really really effective player uh, for Wolves, and a, a huge part of that that kind of wing back right midfield role that they, they fill with him and then Johnny on the other side, where they, they can get up and down the pitch, but helps out defensively absolutely when needed. Now, his team is kind of jam packed with uh, fullbacks. I haven't just gone position by position. I picked 11 players, and then they just happened to. A, simple, a remote kind of look at a team. Now, anyway, next up we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold. So don't think that I'm thinking he should be a centre-back or anything like that. Trent Alexander-Arnold has been playing fantastically, of course, for Liverpool. Whipping in some lovely crosses. He's been involved with a lot for uh, Liverpool. Three assists, one goal in 16 appearances, which is just pretty solid. He's had the odd knock, not featured in every single game. I think he actually just got injured again this weekend, so he's out of action once more. But it's been so important for Liverpool in this spell where they've uh, absolutely dominated the Premier League and... Uh, how long will it last? We don't know, but he's been he's been really important alongside his fellow defender Virgil Van Dijk. Now I'm having trouble finding him here. Virgil Van Dijk, where are you, mate? Virgil Van Dijk um, has been again. I mean, look at all these special cards. If that doesn't tell you the guy's been outrageous this year, then nothing will. He has an 85 rated card. I think he'll go up to maybe like an 87. Um, I think it'll probably bump him up too, which will give some of his other cards an upgrade. Virgil van Dijk definitely deserves it. Um, yeah, as you can see, he 71 pace, all this 
standard sort of stuff with all those special cards you think he's going to get closer to it obviously um, in terms of goals and assists it's just one and one with each crucially important in that winner against Everton of course which was two big points but I mean in terms of being a rock at the defence the guy just just outrageous he's so so important to that Liverpool team and he really there's a lot of doubters when Liverpool spent so much money on him but he has been sensational and fair play definitely worth um, worth all the money spent on him Next up we have Lucas Digne, 78 rated card, another player that um, has been very, very, very good uh, and a new transfer. Obviously Lucas Digne signed for Everton in the summer. He scored a couple free kicks, he's put in some nice crosses, he's got three goals, three assists in the league. Um, really, really important, once again, two man of the matches, winning 2.3 aerials a game, which is not bad for a fullback, you wouldn't expect him to be on that many of them. Kind of playing as a left wing back and uh, has been really, really important to the side um, really crucial player this year got a lot of points in fantasy football as well i don't know if you guys have got him or not you should absolutely pop him in your team he's been uh, been pretty decent this year we're gonna go to one final fullback now and that is aaron wan bissaka now aaron wan bissaka uh, i heard an interesting story he originally was a winger i think a lot of people knew that but he was moved into a more defensive position because they chucked him there against wilf zaha in training and he kept dispossessing Zaha in training. They were like, if he can do it to Zaha, pretty sure he could do a job in the Premier League. So they pulled him further back into a match and he was absolutely brilliant. He's obviously been so effective for Palace this year, getting involved in so much, going forward defensively, really effective. Palace obviously haven't been incredible this year. They're, they're not flying to the heights of, say, Watford, but uh, they're doing doing well. They're, they're pretty solid mid-table now, and um, Wan-Bissaka has been really important in that defence. And for someone so young, born in 97, he's obviously, what, only just turned 21 a couple of months ago. Could be really exciting for England in the next few years. Next up, we have another player from a newly promoted side, and that is Raul Jimenez. Now, Raul Jimenez um, has got some really important goals for Wolves so far this season. Six goals, four assists isn't insane, but for a newly promoted side, that's a really decent return. And I think he might go up to like a 79 or 80 in this side. Um, like I said, he's, he's been so important in some of his hold up. He scored goals in some very, very important games. Obviously scored in the winner in the cup against Liverpool, which was important. Scored against Tottenham to give them the 2-1 lead, I believe. Scored against Bournemouth in a win. Scored against Chelsea in a win. The guy scores important, important goals. And for me, that is enough for him to get upgraded to 79 or 80. Again, really, really effective for this Wolves side. So no reason why they wouldn't give him that. Next up, we have Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford has absolutely found himself under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, he's down as an 81 left winger. I'd like to see him move to a striker and give a slight bump to a couple of those stats. I think he's going to find his form even more so as the season continues. But I think he deserves to be an 82 or an 83 rated card. I personally think he's a fantastic talent. And if you are leading the line for Manchester United in centre forward, you should probably be higher than an 81 rated card, right? That, that's, my, that's my kind of logic. If you're leading your club for one of the best sides in the world, on paper, one of the biggest sides in the world that can attract a lot of talent, you'd think Marcus Rashford, the way he's playing, should probably be a little bit higher than that. Anyway, we're going to move on to one of these Bournemouth players that have uh, seen, again, a very resurgent first half of the season for Bournemouth and um, one that's drawn a lot of attention. Ryan Fraser, obviously um, the king of assists in the Premier League this season. Nine Premier League assists, five goals according to who scored. That's where these stats have come from, or who scored. Some may vary depending on different outlets. Uh, the guy's been fantastic. He looked really exciting when I watched him against Arsenal. He's looked really exciting against quite quite a few teams. A um, little bit quiet over December. He did a lot more a little bit further back in the season. He went for a spell where he was getting an assist a game and really, really exciting. But he's very influential for Bournemouth. One of those players that uh, is so, so important to the side. If you take him out, it really would be a completely, entirely different team. And that is even more so the sake when you uh, when you partner him up with this guy. He has made, Ryan Fraser has made the most assists this season to Callum Wilson's goals, if that makes sense. So he's assisted the most one player more than any other side team in the league, player in the league. Makes sense, trust me. These guys have been so important to get. Callum Wilson obviously um, has nine goals, five assists in 19 Premier League starts. Again, a fantastic, fantastic return and goals in some important games. A goal and an assist and a two-on win over Huddersfield. Games like that are what will really, really push you up and, um, and help you out as a, as a side like Bournemouth to put, draw you away from the relegation zone. Uh, he scored in a loss against United, which is a bit of a shame. Obviously, made his debut for England as well. So he's been really exciting player this year. Talks for big, big, big money move to uh, 
to Chelsea uh, are in the cards, but I'm highly, highly doubting that will happen. But he's very, very good for Bournemouth and one of uh, one of the top strikers, one of the top English strikers performing at the moment. We're going to finish it off with this final player. I think uh, there can't be any arguments about Felipe Anderson. He has come to England and settled in absolutely tremendously. Banging uh, eight goals, two assists so far in his West Ham career. And it's seen him net three in form so far as well. So obviously FIFA are recognising this too, which is kind of pointing towards an upgrade. I think if he was to get an 84, that could see some interesting upgrades to his informs. I can't remember exactly how they do it in terms of I know if one over overlays the other one does, but I can't remember if then the up and up and up get upgraded too, if you know what I mean. You probably do know what I mean. But Felipe Anderson, yeah, very, very important for West Ham this year. A side that arguably was struggling for goals a little bit um, in the previous season, and they've kind of found their feet with him this year. He looked very, very good. I was at Arsenal West Ham the other day, and he was pulling the strings. It's comfortable on the counter, really, really efficient on the ball. Great striker of the ball, came very, very close one time. And uh, yeah, he's a player that, without doubt, I'm sure we all agree, deserves an upgrade. But that, guys, is the end of my 11. I'm sure there are many, many, many more players that you would like to see uh, upgraded. But I would be very eager to hear what you think. So if you guys could comment down below and let me know what you think, who you think should be in, um, in with a shout of an upgrade this year. I mean, I'm just trying to see if there's any players in here that would be deserving an upgrade that I'd get an untradeable boost. But just looking, I don't think there would be, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below if there's anyone that you would like to... There you go, Ryan Fraser. That'd be great if that got upgraded. If there's anyone you'd like to see get an upgrade this year, um, from the Premier League. I'll be very interested to find out what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you have enjoyed it. Of course, subscribe to this channel if it is your first time watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.